Hey guys, this is GKCS. We are talking about the question called Chef and Magic Arrays, which is the sixth question from the Course of Challenge this time. You have an array, as you can expect, in the Magic Array thing. And you have another array. And you have another array. And so on and so forth. So basically, you have N arrays. Okay, or let's call it N arrays. Each of these arrays has a size L of i. And the sum of all these sizes from i equal to 0 to n minus 1 is equal to n. Okay, so this is the length of the input basically. And all of these arrays have one special property, which is that they can be cyclically shifted. Okay, if you don't know about cyclic shifting, you can read in the description below. But what it basically means is that uh, you can push one of these elements to this position, and then this person gets pushed to the forward position, and so on and so forth. And Till the end of the array. Now, this last element has to go somewhere. It can't increase the size of the array. So it cyclically shifts itself to this point. Right? Very similar to how module it just goes. So using this property of cyclic shifting, what you need to do is find a particular sum, which is summing the last element of each array. So let's say that's the index L minus the first element of the next array. So this is if this is i a of i l minus would be a of i minus 1 or rather a of i plus 1 and 1. So the first element will be subtracted from the last element of the previous array and you are taking the absolute difference. Okay. So because we have zero based indexing, I'll call this a of 0 and this would be uh, a of l of i gives you the length of array i so this would be uh, L of i minus 1. Okay, last element of the previous array minus first element of the next array, absolute difference. So in this case, what you're seeing is 3 minus 4 is what you need. Absolute difference gives you 1. Similarly, over here you have 7 minus 1. Absolute difference is 6. Okay, now what you need to do is sum all of these. So this goes from 0 to n minus 2. Why is it not n minus 1? Because the last array cannot compare its last element with the first array, uh, first element of the next array, because there is no next array. Okay, so from 0 to n minus 2, or we have m arrays, so that is m minus 2. This is the equation you're looking at. Right? And through cyclic shifting, you need to maximize this equation. So that's your job. Maximize the differences between the first and last elements of all the arrays. Okay, I know that many of you had gone for the greedy approach over here, which is uh, basically trying to set the difference between this element and this element as maximum, and then taking this element and trying to set the difference between this element and this element as the maximum. So what you're trying to do essentially is whatever element you get here, you subtract that with the maximum or the minimum of this array to increase the maps, uh, absolute difference as much as you can. Okay, so that is one approach, but in this case it doesn't work. In this question it doesn't work, so let's just look at a test case. Let's say the first array is all fours. So cyclically shifting it is not going to help. Uh, every time the last element will be four. And the last array is all sixes. So again, cyclic shifting doesn't help here. This is the only thing on which your answer is based. So. What we are going to do is we are going to try to use the greedy approach and see if it fails. 4 minus whichever element you put here is what you are going to get here. So 4 minus x plus the last element is 6 minus y. So in your hands there's just x and y. Now if you use the greedy approach for 4, the maximum difference is going to come when you put either a 1 or a 7. So that answer will be 3. Okay, so let's put 1 here. We see that the answer over here is 3 plus. If you put 1 here, then you're getting 7 over here. 7 minus 6 gives you 1. So 6 minus 7 actually, uh, that is absolute difference, that is going to give you 1. The answer is 4. The other thing you can do is actually put 7 over here. So that will require a cyclic shift of 7 and then 1 gets pushed here 2 gets pushed here 3, goes here 4, comes here 5, and finally 6. Okay, so this is your new array. What happens here? 
4 minus 7 is still 3 plus 6 minus 6 is 0. So that is 6 minus 6 is 0. So you have 0 here and you have 3. So among these two, you choose this as your answer. Either it is a max or minimum. Your greedy approach gives you an answer of 4. But what you could have done was put 2 in the in the beginning. So let's say 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 1. So what has happened here is that you have psychically shifted, you have put 1 at the end. And so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 have come over here. Okay, so what happens here is that 4 minus 2, 4 minus 2 gives you 2, and 1 minus 6. Gives you or six minus one, whatever you take it as, uh, gives you an answer of five. So this gives you seven, and this is the optimal answer. So instead of seven, you're getting four, and therefore our greedy approach doesn't work. All right. Uh, the reason it doesn't work mathematically is because when you're taking an element over here, or when you're trying to maximize the difference between this element and this element, what you're not taking into consideration is what this element will be. So this element is almost becoming random. Okay, and if you have a look at the greedy approach, it says that whenever you're heading towards local optima, it has to also head towards global optima. But there's no guarantee when you're doing this. Because this element is random, again, you're trying to maximize, it might go wrong, as you can see in the test case very clearly. Okay, so now let's go for the correct approach, which is dynamic program. So what we'll try to do is find a brute force solution uh, in a recursive way. So uh, let's say you are at array i, and you want to shift the elements in that array by x. So if I take an example, let's say 3, 4, 6, 1, 2. Okay, uh, and you can see the indexes are 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if I want to shift it by, you know, uh, x is equal to 2, then I get element 6 being at index 0, uh, 1 being after it, 2 being after it, and then what's happened is 3 has gone over here, and after that, 4 has come up. So this is a cyclic shift by x equal to 2. So what we are going to try to do is for every x, we are going to find what is the maximum possible answer you can get with the previous array. Right? That's because there are multiple arrays and then you want to find the last element and first element differences. So the equation we come up with is f of i, i -th array, shifted by x elements is equal to the maximum possible you can get by the previous array being shifted by all positions j equal to 0 to l of i minus 1. This i minus 1 is in bracket. Uh, in fact, this is l of i minus 1 minus 1. So just for all possible j, you can say. Uh, the previous answer plus the difference between the last element of the previous array minus the element in the first position after shifting by x elements. Okay, and this into i is there in the question itself. So this is the equation that we have through the question. So this is now what we need to solve. Now, you might think that why is this a of i minus one and j minus one? So a of i minus one is the previous array, that's fine. j minus one because you can see here that if you shift the element by x positions, the last element is the element at x minus 1. So you can see a 4 went to the end. And so that's the reason why we have this. So if the equation is clear, now we can actually try to make simplify the equation. Okay, uh, this is modulo. So absolute value basically. Absolute values of a minus b is nothing but the maximum of a minus b comma minus a plus b. Right, the sign sign inverted and you can take the maximum. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to rewrite this equation to suit the maximum. Why am I doing that? Because there's a maximum outside. Okay, there's an outer function maximum, and that's why I want an inner function of maximum, and then maybe I can merge them together, as we will see. So guys, now you see that that's it. Just the, the absolute value has been converted to a minus b and minus a plus b. Okay, so these two are equivalent. Rather, they're not equivalent, but you are just taking the maximum of all of these, so it works. I've taken a comma over here. Now, what you see is something interesting. 
maximum of a plus b is equal to maximum of a plus maximum of b okay if you have two terms a plus b then this is how the maximum comes out to be as long as they are being added so you see these equations these two equations they have some addition terms what you're looking for is to open it up that's what we'll do take take the first term for example and i'll just expand this first f of i minus 1 comma j plus a of i minus 1 j minus 1 into i minus a of i x into i have a look at this you want to maximize this term right so we can take these terms together and we can take this term separately in fact uh, because there's a minus here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go plus over here and i'm going to put the minus inside the bracket so that things are a little clearer so then this a plus b equation works okay now what do you want to do you want to maximize this term and this term separately now if you look closely have a look at this term a of i x into i this can be done in order one basically you are at array i this term is already known to you okay so that part is separate you cannot maximize i mean you cannot maximize this term because it's constant for the given x the only thing you want to really maximize is this term this entire thing f of i minus 1 comma j so for the previous array the maximum value after shifting j if you have reached for the current array that means for the previous array you already computed this value this part is done for the previous array give me the element at j minus 1 and multiply that that by i so this value is also known to you let's say you're pre-computed even now it's not helping you because you wanted to maximize right and if you want to maximize each and every one i mean if you want to go through one by one then it's going to take you all right so that won't help us here's the interesting thing you want the maximum so during computation for the previous array during finding the answers for the previous array when this i was i minus one and this x was j you calculated this at the same time you can calculate this entire value then okay you calculate this entire value and this value needs to be maximized across all j so from j equal to 0 to li minus 1 minus 1 you calculate all of these values this happens in the previous array itself so you have calculated all of these values uh, whenever it is exceeding max so max is initialized to f of i minus 1 comma 0 plus a of i minus 1 0 into i okay so this is this is what you initialize max as and then what you do is you try f of i minus 1 comma 1 plus a of i minus 1 comma 1 into i if this is greater if this value is greater then you change max otherwise you keep max so basically what you're doing is just you're taking the maximum of all of these possible values for all g's okay take your time understand clearly what's happening we are taking the maximum for all possible j for the previous array these values all right and because we are taking the maximum while we are computing the values when we'll be computing for i x we'll also be computing this value f of i comma x plus a of i x minus 1 into i plus 1 because the next time this will be i plus 1 so this is what you are pre-computing at this point you check if this is greater than your current max if it is then you set it to this value otherwise you keep your current max okay very important so that you can you can calculate for the next array this value maximum value so what we are seeing is that the maximum for the previous array has already been computed so i'll just get some space now now what we saw is that this entire part this part was you know computed in the previous array itself so i'll just call it max 
of i minus 1 uh, minus a of i x into i is the first term. Right? This is the first term. Now you need to find max for all j. But do you really? No. This is what the max meant. Okay. Hopefully it's clear. Uh, similarly, for the for the second part, what you have is f of i minus 1 comma j plus minus a of i minus 1 j minus 1 into i this part is in a bracket um, plus a of i x into i this is your equation very similarly in the previous array itself when you're finding the answers when you're finding the answers what you did is you also calculated this entire term for every j and set something called max 2 i minus 1 okay this is max 2 for all j's maximum this is max 1 let's say for all j's maximum these two terms are very important because the next array depends on them now essentially what we are doing is we are taking this term max 1 i minus 1 and this term comma max 2 i minus 1 and this term this term for every f of i comma x okay, I'll just rub this part out so it's very clear these are the only two terms that we have in our equation now and because max i minus 1 max 1 i, I minus 1 and max 2 i minus 1 have already been pre-computed this is order 1 this is order 1 and of course this and this is order 1 again okay. So what we are seeing is that our recursive function gives us answers in order 1 per x, of course per x. So you have to see for every shift uh, what is the maximum answer and based on that, so max of these two by the way, you have to update your value of f of ix. Okay, so find out the values of all f of ix, the final answer will be the maximum amongst all x. In, in the last array, yeah, just the maximum amongst all x in the last array, f of i com, i will be over there. I think we said that we have m arrays, right? So m minus one comma x for all x. This will give you the answer. All right, and because it's for all x, uh, how many terms do you have? How many how many elements do you have in every array? You have uh, li. And summing them all up from 0 to m minus 1, we get n. So the overall time complexity is order n. Okay. Through dynamic programming, we found the maximum for the previous array, these two terms for the previous arrays, and then we just subtracted or added a term to it to find the current maximum for x number of shifts. And finally, we get the answer over here. So this is a very interesting question based on dynamic programming. Uh, the next video is probably going to be on code forces, uh, the, the recent rounds that I and Drexler have participated in. So stay tuned until next time.